for more on the quality of teaching globally, I spoke to Posse Salberg. He's a Finnish educator, author, and scholar, and a visiting professor at Harvard University. And I asked him how American teachers compare to around the world. All of those so-called high-performing education systems that include Finland, uh, most parts of Canada, Singapore, the Netherlands, some other places, they all have a teacher preparation system that looks very different to what it is here. Um, namely, the, the teacher education is normally taking place in academic research universities and there are very small number of programs. Here in the United States, as many people know, there are more than 2,000 different programs where teachers are prepared. Some of them are very poor online programs and some of them are world-class uh, programs. So I think what, one, of the, one of the takeaways from the international comparison studies is, is that when, when, if you want to have a high quality teaching force, you have to concentrate your teacher preparation in, into your best universities and uh, somehow standardize or limit the number of programs so that not anyone can open the, um, the teacher preparation yeah. programs as it is now here in the United States. One of the complaints I often hear from teachers is that they don't feel appreciated. And I'm, by that, I mean they're not getting paid enough, essentially. And there's all this discussion about entry-level salaries for teachers are, are basically near minimum wage in many, many cities across the country. And if you want to attract the best talent, or at least great talent, to these schools, you're going to have to be much more competitive, at least with the private sector. How does Canada, for example, or Finland, how do they attract people who want to be in the industry? And I'm not saying you should be in it because of the money, but I think the money is an important reward. Yeah, absolutely. If you look at, uh, again, the, the high-performing, successful education systems, all of them, including Finland, pay their teachers very close to what they would earn with a similar degree in, uh, in uh, uh, labor markets elsewhere. And this is not the case here in the United States, where according to the OECD, for example, the teachers here in America, they, o they only earn about 60% what they would earn with a similar degree in other parts of the labor markets. But I, I think people need to keep in mind that most people who go into teaching here in, in America and in Finland and anywhere don't do that because of the money. So often when when we are looking at the teachers who uh, start teaching here in America and then they leave teaching often after two or three or four years, uh, the, the main reason is not money or compensation. The main reasons are often related to the working conditions or the lack of discipline in the school or poor leadership in the school or something like this. And money, the compensation comes, uh, comes afterwards. But I, I think that what, one of the critical conditions here in the United States is to make sure that teachers are paid uh, properly. So it's not a surprise that places where there are expensive houses are going to attract more teachers because they have more money and vice versa. Poor neighborhoods are not going to have the funding to attract the same type of teachers. Is there a way to, to help balance that out so that the gap isn't so wide? Well, you're pointing to a huge problem here in the United States and, and what the, uh, the federal policies and also the state level policies here in the United States are more and more addressing now, which again comes from the international evidence, is the more equitable funding of uh, education uh, system. And I, as, a, as a foreign researcher and an educator here in the United States, I'm often saying that this should be the first condition, first, first thing to change and improve here in the United States to make the funding of schools more equitable so that those schools where they have more needs and uh, requirements for helping everybody to be successful, that they would have more resources. This often also goes with the, the quality of teachers. For example, in Finland, we have a system where this equitable funding of schools is also making it possible to hire more teachers or, or more experienced teachers into the schools. We often say that we want to have the best teachers that we have working in the most difficult, uh, difficult and demanding schools. And I think this is exactly what the, the, the many parts of the United States would requi require as well. So they want the teacher's salaries to be based upon how well the students do. And I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on this and do you think this is a good idea? No, that's absolutely a crazy idea. And there are many people here in the United States, including most of the teachers who who understand that this is something that will never work. There's no evidence actually in the research that merit-based pay anywhere, not only in teaching and schools, but anywhere would be a good idea. And that's why I think I'm not against of you know paying people 
based on what they do, but when the, the if, if the merits are based on and linked to the, the standardized test scores, then the, the whole system gradually becomes corrupted. As we have seen here in the United States, in Atlanta and Philadelphia, many other places where, where teachers and the whole system begins to cook and manipulate the, the tests that were meant to measure how much kids are learning, how much they are progressing.